the cities and counties plan to revamp the San Diego River. An early season winter storm is heading in our direction. There's a chance for mountain snow and some rain. Details ahead. Efforts are ramping up to boost turnout of Hispanic voters. We'll show you some of the latest efforts aimed at Latina voters. Happy birthday to you. And happy why this Salada Beach doctor you. wants happy to change the way the world Jeff. sings happy birthday. Happy birthday. To you. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. The San Diego River could soon be in for some big changes. It's part of a new plan to turn it into a regional attraction. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jesse Pagan. Carlo has the night off. I'm Marcella Lee. The plan would add bike paths, riverfront dining, and other amenities along both sides of the river. Tonight, CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe explains the vision that many local leaders seem to be backing. The long-term vision from the county and the city is to develop the San Diego River from Ocean Beach to right here in Mission Valley and all the way through the mountains as far inland as Julian. A push to revamp the San Diego River is growing among San Diego City and county officials. This is a really exciting opportunity. The $700 million plan envisions a trail system that would run from the mountains to the ocean, adding more pathways for pedestrians and bicyclists on both sides of the river and creating parks and riverfront dining and see so much of what San Diego has to offer and what will be a, a national treasure, but it required dedicated, sustained funding. County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher is spearheading the efforts for the county to move forward with the plan and says the county and city have agreed to a new financing plan that would pay for it without a tax increase. It involves establishing an enhanced infrastructure financing district that would bring in money to help execute the River Park Master Plan. Going into the future, the increase in property taxes that naturally happens, usually about 1% a year, that excess part will be diverted to be spent here along the river. Council member Raul Campillo says redeveloping the river would not only make for a cleaner river, but the plan would also add financially. Many other great cities like San Antonio and Atlanta, they are emphasizing their rivers, and we want to do the same thing in San Diego. Officials also say the plan would require both agencies to come together to find solutions to homeless encampments along the river. We've partnered with the Regional Task Force on Homelessness with the city and the county to make sure that as this trail gets developed, uh, that the outreach workers are there, the shelter beds are there, the opportunities are there so we can get homeless out of these canyons, get them out of these areas as we develop it into something beautiful. The plan would be phased out, focusing on urban areas first. Environmental studies have already been built into the plan, making it easier to adopt. But officials do anticipate more environmental impact studies in the future once developers start getting involved. We're making a long-term investment in a, in a project uh, that will be here literally for generations. The joint partnership between the county and city will make spending decisions and from there officials predict they will have a better idea of when and how to move forward in the next nine to 12 months. Rocia de la Fe, CBS 8. Feel the chill in the air. Yes, Chief Meteorologist Carleen Chavis on storm watch tonight as we keep an eye out on the skies. Carleen. In here or out there? Because I feel <laughs> a chill in the air in yes. here, too. <laughs> we need to turn off the AC in here. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to. Over the next couple of days, we are talking about much cooler temperatures that are rolling in. Now, we do have the cloud cover that is arriving, even more of it. We had clouds rolling in yesterday, but that didn't do much to our heat. We're still above seasonal when it came to those temperatures. When you're looking at the closest showers, we're seeing that across San Luis Obispo as well as Santa Barbara. We did have a coastal eddy that developed earlier today, and so that brought in some low clouds right along the coast and still going strong with that cloud cover more intensified as we go into the next couple of days with this storm system set to move in. So you are looking at a chance for showers That's once we get past midnight, so dark and early in the morning at 450 and we're going to start to have those slick roads. So give yourself some extra time during your morning drive. You're noticing by the afternoon hours, not too much going on. We take a little bit more of a break and just still seeing some cloud cover. And then as we go into the evening hours, that's when we have yet another influx when it does come to that moisture. So so looking at a chance we could see some early morning showers then start to develop with some snow. You're seeing that in the early morning hours and then it's going to extend a little bit more on Thursday into the morning drive. Seeing the snow, heavier downpours could uh, take place over the mountains as well as seeing that across inland valleys and that's going to linger as we go into the morning hours on Thursday, drier by the afternoon. We're also talking about mountain snow, more details in the storm system coming up. Marcella, Jesse.
All right, Carlene, thanks. Tonight we are getting new reports about out of control parties near San Diego State University. On Halloween night, detectives say someone called police to a cul-de-sac known as Greek Circle. As CBS 8's David Gofferson tells us, they were reporting 50 men trying to grab a woman on the street. This was the scene Saturday night in the college area near San Diego State. Pretty typical for a weekend, according to neighbors who recorded this cell phone video. But on Halloween night at 1 in the morning, someone called 911 to report something more serious. 5050 College Avenue, approximately 50 males in the cul-de-sac were grabbing at a female as they were walking by. San Diego police responded, but the cul-de-sac known as Greek Circle is the responsibility of San Diego State University Police. If that's on College Place, the cul-de-sac, that's going to be SDSUP's jurisdiction. Greek Circle is home to at least six San Diego State fraternities and sororities. SDSUPD is also checking 50, 64 College Place for reports of about 100 people in vehicles playing loud music, possibly related. San Diego State Police released a statement saying they received, quote, a second-hand report of a group of individuals attempting to grope others and a separate report of individuals playing loud music near a cul-de-sac. Once officers arrived at the scene, all individuals in the area dispersed. Neighbors say they have seen trouble there before. That cul-de-sac in particular is um, home to a whole bunch of frats, and we have begged SDSU, since it's their property, to patrol the area, and they say that they would try really hard. Back on Greek Circle, I saw some fraternity members from one house taking out large amounts of trash, but nobody wanted to speak on camera about the party the night before. It's now been one year since a 17-year-old girl reported being gang-raped by SDSU football players at an off-campus Halloween party. No criminal charges have been filed in that case, which remains under review by the district attorney's office. I think the solution would be consequences for actions, but that would mean that somebody from SDSU would actually have to go out there or address the matter, and they don't. We are keeping an eye on the college area. If you have cell phone video of parties or disturbances in your neighborhood, please send it our way. In the college area, David Goffertson, CBS 8. All right, David, thanks. Tonight, there's a new look at one of San Diego's ambitious infrastructure projects. Local leaders were at the construction site for Pure Water San Diego. It's a project that's supposed to increase the city's use of purified, recyclable wastewater. By 2035, the goal is to provide half of San Diego's water supply while cutting in half the amount of sewage dumped into the ocean. Half of our city's water supply while radically reducing the amount of sewage we put into the ocean, that's called a win-win, everybody. When this project is completed, it will be the most environmentally advanced water recycling facility in the world. Right now, 10 different pure water construction projects are underway across the city. Election Day is a week from today, and so far about 13% of eligible voters have already returned their ballots. CBS 8 political reporter Morgan Reiner has been tracking trends for us today. She's also been looking at schedules for candidates as we head into the final countdown, including Governor Gavin Newsom. Newsom is campaigning up and down the state this week, but not for himself. That's how safe he knows he is. He's campaigning for Democrats in tight races and for Proposition 1, which would enshrine the right to abortion in the Constitution. To put it quite simply, political data guru Paul Mitchell said Governor Newsom is extremely safe. The fact that they lost that recall election, the fact that a lot of their top tier candidates um, you know, ended up in single digits. He said Newsom can't afford to focus on other races. Most of the attention uh, is being paid to the key congressional races around the country. Um, there were seven seats that Democrats picked up in 2018, and Republicans clawed back four of those uh, in 2020. Political analyst Steve Swat said midterms usually punish the party in power. And Republicans only need to win five more seats nationally to take back control of the House. Since uh, the Civil War, there have been 40 midterm elections and the party of the president has lost 37 of those. And since 1974, the average defeat for the 
president's party in these midterm elections has been 23 seats. And the issue with not having an exciting race at the top? It's more work to get people to turn out to vote for races further down the ballot. Saving grace for Democrats might be the fact that they can now focus on Prop 1 and try to make this election kind of a polarized election around choice and around the Supreme Court. Newsom has spent $5 million of his uh, campaign fund in doing some pro-Prop 1 uh, advertisements, but I don't think that's going to be enough to, to really surge the vote. As of Tuesday, about 2.8 million ballots are in. I think by this point, we would have expected to see a little bit higher numbers, but there's really not a good comparison. Because in 2018, the last gubernatorial election, there was a huge blue wave and only seven of the 58 counties had mail-in ballots. Today, every county does. Some of the closer congressional races to watch are taking place in the Central Valley and Southern California. Redistricting happened from the local level to the national level. So you have Democrats who are running in more red areas and vice versa. All right, Morgan, thanks. The iconic Randy's Donuts is coming to San Diego. Yeah, you might have seen the classic gigantic donut atop the company's flagship spot in Inglewood. Starting next January, 10 Randy's Donuts locations will open across San Diego. San Diegan Emilio Tomez will be at the helm. He tells CBS 8 he's expecting to open the first location in Sarah Mesa's Stonecrest Plaza on Murphy Canyon Road. He's also looking at other spots in La Jolla, Escondido, and the South Bay. We've got so much more still ahead on CBS 8 News Live at 6, including a closer look at a proposition on this year's ballot, which would provide money for art in schools. Plus, Dia de los Muertos is now underway. We take a look at some of the celebrations here in San Diego County.